new and extended electromagnetic science at the time. You get to a certain stage in scientific development, sometimes to stages where you're faced with problems and barriers and you sort of forced to rethink and go in different directions. I think we're seeing that one of those peculiar time periods in the history of science where we're going to overturn some cherished models, not, not too much, but make some changes and they'll open the door to an enormous amount of new technology in electricity and magnetism in nuclear reactions in motor development in battery applications in space flight in perhaps in anti-gravity uh, I think there are in, in creating scarce elements from plentiful elements I think we have just reached a plateau now where the the world door is opening to what a millennium of new science we're talking about real life hardware we're talking about experiments in science that are telling us beyond any reasonable doubt that we have technologies that will enable us to be free from the bondage that we now feel free from uh, some of these economic uh, constraints that we've created for ourselves because you see if energy is free and it will be very shortly food is free, housing is free, then we're free to create our, our, express our creative gifts and not be like drones. And we're also free to explore our greater selves. And it's going to be a very exciting time coming up. The future of the world, as seen by conventional thinkers, or even many far-reaching thinkers, is uh, tame compared to what a coal fusion and free energy is going to do. No aspect of human culture will be untouched by the, this energy revolution. The very fact that the material that covers 70% of the, the, the planet's surface will now be available as a fuel source, and the, and the uh, fact that water makes up a, a huge percentage of our bodies, and this is a fuel and a source of energy, this is going to have incredible uh, psychological and religious and historical and geopolitical implications. The Middle East uh, picture and the strength of the uh, oil interests there is going to be drastically altered. Uh, air pollution will be abolished in most cities that are now affected by the internal combustion engine. And uh, space travel, which is a favorite subject of mine, will be transformed. The ability to travel to the planets and to the stars will be um, given a gigantic boost, one that I never in my lifetime expected uh, as an engineer who deals with those things. Some people are saying that the title of my book, The Coming Energy Revolution, is uh, a bit fearsome, that uh, revolution implies a sudden radical change and that uh, the status quo uh, will suffer and uh, that people whose jobs depend on the status quo will, will suffer. Uh, so perhaps evolution is a uh, better to way, way to look at it. But one way or another, our leaders, our political leaders, our uh, business leaders, our utility company executives have to address the changeover to clean energy sources. And it'll probably come from abroad, so it probably will happen fairly fast. I'm not really concerned myself about a radical shift because people seem to be on the verge of readiness for change. A lot of fear but also some positive anticipation. And maybe it takes an unraveling of what we have to put together a cleaner, more sane world. Is mankind ready? Do we have the maturity to handle it? Are we giving matches to a baby? That's, that's the question. Well, the first answer is, we're kind of backing ourselves against the wall. If we maintain the status quo, we're doomed anyway. It looks like we're going to get a shot by having this energy available to us. If we're not mature enough to handle it, well, I guess we're doomed either way. We have a chance to survive, a chance to go on, but it will take, in a way, a consciousness transformation, understands their consciousness movement and things like that, that people are starting to wake up. It's not just a me game now. It's a we game, and as we learn to work together and have empathy for one another, 
we can transcend the old selfish consciousness, which has caused all the problems and all the wars and everything else, into a recognition that we are a planetary being. We've only been able to present a handful of inventors and their remarkable devices in this program. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of people worldwide, scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, who are actively working right now, researching and developing this phenomenal technology to the point where it can be successfully scaled up and mass marketed. We are at a pivotal crossroads in human history. Can we as a society release our fears associated with the violence of the past and embrace the unknown? Can we cast aside our rigid skepticism in favor of an open-minded spirit of inquisitiveness? Our very survival may depend on how we answer these questions. We hope we've given you enough of the necessary information with which you may base your future decisions regarding this exciting new field, one that will soon affect all of our lives and the very fate of our planet Earth as well. I'll see you at the finish line. The race is on. If you were fascinated by the amazing technologies and concepts you've just witnessed, now you can get even more valuable information and details from the new energy series. Five full-length videos, nine hours of in-depth conversations and demonstrations of free energy systems. Explore the worlds of inventors and theoretical physicists who are changing the paradigms of science. Volume First one features Tom Bearden. In particle physics, any electrical charge is automatically a broken symmetry. Now what this means is there is a virtual photon flux, a violent flux exchange between the vacuum itself, which is filled with this virtual photon flux. Volume 2, John Hutchison. I feel that that is also true. I think the Mayan connect is also a uh, coherer of frequencies and transmit them out and then lock this doorway into space and time. This motor here drew 12 and a half amps. Volume 3, Joseph Newman. This motor right here only draws 7 and a half amps. And look at the size of the propeller. Look at the size of the propeller. Look at the size of the motor. Look at the size of the motor. Now this is exactly what I teach throughout my book. I taught it to Dr. Hastings. I've taught it to the world. But the larger you make the mass, then the, the smaller amount of power it will take and the more power it will produce. Volume 4 highlights type. Troy Reed. This is an old mechanical device. It's got, it's got two inner wheels on the inside and two outer shell wheels with magnets. They've got eight magnets on this side, eight magnets on the inside here. Let's see what kind of torque we got at 75 PSI. And Volume 5, Dennis Lee. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> Maxed it out. So it went all the way off the end of this thing, 150 foot-pounds of torque. 
modified this engine. They're just twenty nine the ninety five for each tape. Now the process or get all here, five for uh, one hundred nineteen ninety five. A savings of thirty dollars. Place your order today.